Hi, and welcome to this tutorial on how to make sensible estimates by rounding. Imagine you had the sum of 42.7 plus 38.5. And you were asked on the spot, what do you think the answer was? Now, the purpose of estimating and the purpose of rounding is to allow us to come up with an answer that is going to be close to this, but not exactly the right number, but it's going to let us know what it's going to roughly be. So we have to look at the numbers that we've been given and we have to round them to the first number. So I'm going to look at this 42.7 and I'm going to say 42.7 is roughly 40. Okay, now I'm going to look at this 38.5 and say, okay, 38.5 is roughly 40 as well. So if I was going to estimate the answer to 42.7 plus 38.5, I would say it's going to be roughly 40 plus 40, which is equal to 80. So a sensible estimate for 42.7 plus 38.5 is 80. Right, but what if I want to be more accurate, I hear you say? Well, actually, in functional skills maths, if the question asks you to say estimate, this is as accurate as you can be. If you go any more accurate, then you're not answering the question. Okay, let's look at a different scenario where you're going to want to be more accurate. So, let's say we've got a question which says, estimate 345 plus 59. Okay, so, in this question, I'm going to say that 345 is roughly 300. I'm going to say 59 is roughly 60. So I'm going to say that the answer to this is going to equal 360. Right, I can hear that you're not too happy with this because you want to do 350 plus 60 and that would equal 410, which is a lot closer to what the answer would be. But in functional skills maths, when we're talking about estimating, we always have to round to the first number. So we call this number the first significant figure. Here we go. So the first significant figure is the first number in a number that tells us something about that number. So for example, in 5,298, the first significant figure is the five because that tells us that this number is roughly 5,000, okay? In 298, the first significant figure is the 2, but this would round to 300 because this number is roughly 300. So it's important to know what the first significant figure is. And the first significant figure is the first significant figure because it tells us the most about the number. So the 5,000 tells us a lot more about how big this number is than the two, okay? And likewise, in this question, this two, which is the 200, tells us a lot more about the size of this number than the nine or the eight. Arguably, the eight tells us very little about the number, considering the number is 298. The 200 is the main indicator of the size of this number. So, let's have a look at another situation. Say, for example, we've got estimate 
45.3 plus 0.095. Okay, so here I know that 45.3, we've got to round it to the first significant figure, so we're going to round it to this 4. Now, if you're looking at a number and the number after it is a 5, then we round it up. So there's a phrase that you could say, 5 or above, you give it a shove. So we go 45, this is going to round to 50. Okay? Now, let's have a look at this. The first significant figure in this number is the 9. Now, after it, we have a 5. So, 5 or above, we give it a shove. So that means that this 9 is going to become a 10. Okay, so let's look at what that looks like. So that'll be plus 0 0.1. Okay, so if we want to estimate 45.3 plus 0 0.0095, that's going to equal 50.1. Okay, this isn't a very good estimate, but it is the correct estimate. Okay, this is what we have to remember. The best estimate isn't the right estimate in functional skills maths. The estimate that you're doing is the estimate where we're rounding things to one significant figure. Now you might wonder what the purpose for this is. And with adding, it is a little bit weird that we're doing it like this. However, the purpose comes in when we consider multiplying. Because we generally know our times tables from um, 1 to 10. So when we're estimating, we're going to get a value that's going to be between 1 and 10 and then some zeros. So in theory, it's going to be easier than dealing with two digits, three digits, four digits. Because estimating is meant to make things simple. So let's have a go at estimating something that we have to multiply. So let's say, estimate 3.9 multiplied by 2.6. Okay, so 3.9, we round this and that rounds up to 4. 2.6, we round this and it adds up to 3. So we can say that 3.9 times 2.6 is going to equal roughly 12. Okay, so there we go. We can see that the estimating in this example had a lot more purpose to it than when we were adding. Let's try something bigger. Let's say, estimate 29.5 multiplied by 1,257. Okay, remember, we're rounding to one significant figure. So no matter how many numbers are, we only want one non-zero number in the thing that we're going to estimate. So, 29.5 to one significant figure. We look at the 2. The 9 makes the 2 round up to a 3. So we call this 30. And that makes sense because we know that 29 is a lot closer to 30 than it is to 20. Now let's look at this. 1,257. Now... A temptation that I always see people doing is to round a larger number to two significant figures. So a lot of people would want to round this to 1,300, but that is not correct. We need to round it to 1,000. Here we go. And so that leaves us with a nice, easy calculation. So if we have 30 multiplied by 1,000, we can multiply the 3 and the 1. 3 times 1 is 3. And then we can simply add the zeros. 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay, then I can break this up with a comma. And I can see that my answer is 30,000. So if I was asked to estimate 29.5 times 12.57, the answer is 30,000. A big clue that we have to estimate is often if you get a ridiculously hard calculation on the non-calculated paper. So if you saw this calculation on the non-calculated paper, it's likely that it's going to be an estimate question. So if you haven't seen the word estimate and you see a calculation like this, go back and have a look. 
Right, I want us to try one more example and then we're going to move to some scenario questions. So let's have a look at estimate 12 times 4501. Okay, here we go. So 12 times 4501. So this is going to become 10 and 4501 is going to become 5000. And I can hear your despair because you know that 4501 is so far away from 5000, but this is still the way we estimate. So let's do the calculation. 5 times 1 is 5, and then add the zeros. 1, 2, 3, 4. Here we go. So our estimate for 12 times 4501 is 10 times 5000, which equals 50,000. Okay, let's go have a look at some scenario questions on crack maths. Right, so here we are at crackmaths.co.uk. So let's scroll down here to look for all you need to know. So we click on all you need to know, and then we can scroll down to number six, how to make sensible estimates by rounding. So here we go, we click on there. Here's the practice questions. Remember some of these words that we've learned so far. Sum means to add, so estimate the sum means to add. Estimate the difference means to subtract. Estimate the product means to multiply. And estimate the quotient. We haven't actually talked about this word quotient. It rarely comes up, to be honest. But the quotient is just the result of dividing one number by another. So if we were dividing these numbers, this would be 123.4 divided by 56.7. Okay, so let's have a look at these scenario questions. So, question one. Estimate the total cost of a hamburger, fries and a drink if the hamburger costs 5.29, fries cost 2.99 and the drink costs 4.49. Okay, so let's look at these one by one. Remember, we're not worried about accuracy. £5.29 is roughly £5. £2.99 is roughly £3, which is true. £4.49 is roughly £4. So here we go, we say we've got £5 for the burger, £3 for the fries, £4 for the drink. So we can now do our calculation. So 5 add 3 equals 8, and 8 add 4 equals 12. Perfect. So our estimate for the cost of this meal is £12. Okay, so I can scroll down here, and I can have a look, click next, click next, to see if I've got that correct. And here we go. 5 plus 3 plus 4 equals 12. Okay, let's have a look at a different question that might not use add. So, <clears throat> let's go down to question 10. So question 10 says, if over one year Sarah spends £829 on coffee, estimate how much she spends a day. Okay, so we have got £829, £829, have a think about what that might be rounded to. What would be a good rough estimate for £829? Okay, so £829 is going to become £800. Excellent. Right, now estimate how much she spends a day. So she spent 800 pounds a year, and we want to know how much she spent a day. So first of all, we need to know how many days there are in a year. So one year equals 365 days. 
OK, so now we need to think of a rough estimate for 365. 3, 6, 5. Remember, it's a rough estimate to make our lives simple. So we think of a rough estimate to make our lives simple. So 365, we're going to say that's 400. OK, so now what we've got is we know that over... We know that over 400 days, Sarah spends £800. So in order to work this out, we're going to have to do 800 divided by 400. OK, now the way I like to do this, these sorts of calculations, is to write them as a fraction. We have a lesson also on cancelling down fractions. So if you need more work on this, you can do that in a bit. But if we have 800 over 400, I know that I can divide both the top and bottom of these by 10. So that can become 80 over 40. Now I also know that this can become, we can divide by 10 again, so it can become 8 over 4. So now this fraction is 8 over 4. That means 8 divided by 4. We can also half both of these. So 8 over 4 can become 4 over 2. And then 4 over 2 can both be halved again, become 2 over 1, which we just call 2. So you might have known that 800 divided by 400 is 2. Or you might have needed to work it out. Or in this question, it might be that you have access to a calculator. In which case, you would have simply typed in 8, oh no, <laughs> well you'd have simply typed in this calculation here, 800 divided by 400 and you'd have found out that that equals 2. So let's have a look about this 2, just look back at the question to find out what the 2 means because we do need to answer the question properly because it's a worded question. So it says if over one year Sarah's coffee spent is £829, estimate how much she spends a day well, this here is a two, which means two pounds, okay? So we'd finish our question off by making a note to say two pounds a day. Okay, excellent. So what I'd like you to do now is if you'd like to visit Crack Maths and go to tutorial six, and then have a practice of the practice questions and the scenario questions, and that should be fine. And then, great, I will see you in a future tutorial. Bye.